sure we are coming in live and there we are nice hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and uh welcome to another live stream and another podcast today we're doing uh open discussion on investing in personal finance and we're going to try to focus on housing uh one of our mods spider-man hey spider-man how are you doing uh requested the stream for us uh to sort of talk about buying a home and housing in general because uh, i believe they're about to make a purchase and uh we figured uh we bring the discussion to chat on twitch and see what uh everybody's take is regarding buying a house uh renting versus whatnot all right and uh I'm curious to see where this takes us. Smith, how are we doing? The man, the legend. Um, one of the reasons I'm curious about this is because uh, from the late 1970s all the way to the mid-2000s, early 2010s, our family was involved uh, in the housing market. Um, both three different companies doing residential and commercial development and stuff like this and i've worked in uh, since i was early teens really because the family was involved in housing i've been on construction sites helping to build homes either just when i was a kid just moving logs from here to here and people making sure it was safe to putting up drywall and doing some of the, the all of the everything right not everything not i didn't do any electrical work i didn't do any plumbing work um because those are very specialized and to either build a house or if you're buying a house there's two things two of the main things you need to check into is the electrical and the plumbing right aside from that uh welcome everyone i'm gonna do my little intro um i'm just gonna read a little bit of the chat so i don't get too far behind goldilocks how are you doing uh spider-man chicho firstly thank you so much for doing this stream for me you continue to be such a positive force and mentor for my um everyday life uh, my pleasure spider-man we're just sharing information just got to do what we got to do right i feel blessed to have met you and to call you a friend i am kicking myself in that as for missing the amazing moment in stream where you read ripper's letter dude that was crazy uh that spider-man art is amazing i'm really excited for this stream awesome spider-man uh ding bobber how are you doing hho thanks for the book recommendation yesterday i didn't realize c.s lewis wrote the chronicles of narnia yeah c.s lewis is huge he wrote a lot of books right yay really excited for the stream nice spider wife mj wait a second spider wife did you switch your name to spider ah it is too spider-man spider-man fan dude and we got spider wife mj mary jane that's what it stands for awesome elder god how are you doing i'm here hello chicho early early mornings uh in the early mornings uh of the hour in the uk hi hubby spider wife says i love your beer thank you nuts vc how are you doing hey chicho uh lonely piggy chicho what are the snacks today oh you want to see my snack today i went to the bakery greetings dr p blessings to you as well uh i went to the bakery today <laughs> i bought some couple of one one day old bread one fresh loaf bread and they had the lemon meringue pie again so i bought myself another lemon meringue pie <laughs> look at this goodness <laughs> so i got lemon meringue pie today as well okay whoa we don't want to lose it we don't want to lose it let me do this so i show you the top as well here's the top right very nice very nice very nice I'll be having this. We'll be having this for a couple of days now. Okay. Spider wife. Are you an are you are you apostle? I don't think so. Uh Bibzer. Just passing by and I start looking on my mythology Celtic. And did you ever uh hear about uh, Triscoll? I don't know, Bibzical intrepid how are you doing brother hey chicho how's it going today going good brother thank you very much dr p laughing out loud 
Maladras to cheers, cheers. I went to Blue Fox today. I was looking for you, Chicho. Blue Fox. Buddy. Freshly made pie. Freshly made pie. Very good bakery. Here in New York, stream starts at 10.30 p.m. Perfect time. Awesome, awesome, Sam. Uh, and thank you again for Bogard uh, comparison. Don't eat that. <laughs> Send it to the UK. Uh, you look like a woodcutter. That could be. I work with wood. Good evening, folks. Catholic traditionalists, how are you doing? Blue Fox. Best brunch on the island, sir. Oh, is it the best brunch on the island? Blue Fox Smith. We actually this morning we went and got uh, bagel, bacon sandwiches, egg. Uh, yes, gang, I'm on Patreon. Okay, if you want to follow this work, if you want to support this work, Patreon is a great place to be. Patreon.com backslash Chicho, C H Y C H O. I don't put anything behind the paywall. This is all Creative Commons. Share and share like. Uh, if you like this work you can just follow and after a while if you see what we're sharing you like what we're sharing and if you do have the funds you do have the means supporting through patreon is a fantastic way to support this project we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv backslash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e okay if you want to participate in this discussion live twitch is where you want to be at okay and you can also support this project by following or subscribing through twitch i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on twitter gaps mines vk and Allo. we do share additional information there as well so it's not a bad way to follow this work follow this project i am recording these discussions on a lapel mic and the audio will be going on to soundcloud as a podcast and that's soundcloud.com backslash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o so if you want to listen to the audio soundcloud is uh where you can grab it where you can follow okay it should be available on your favorite podcasting platform as well if it's not let me know and i'll see what i can do about it right and the video we will be uploading to bitshoot and youtube everything goes to bitshoot and census permitting we will try to load things on youtube okay aside from that welcome everyone i hope you're having a fantastic fantastic tuesday evening or wednesday morning in the uk and europe rest of europe uh tomorrow is comic book day aside from that i'm going to take these guys down and i'm going to catch up with chat uh spider-man thank you for taking care of business Miro, how are you doing? Okay, I am very unaware of how housing works. If you buy a house, do you still need to pay rent uh, or do you need to pay so something else? Do you still need to pay for electrical bills and water bills? You need to pay for electrical, water, you need to pay for sanitation and stuff like this. The garbage people coming up, uh, you need to pay taxes, okay? And taxes are split up in different parts of the world, this tax, that tax. Um, you need to pay for the maintenance of the house. You need to pay a mortgage unless you're buying out cash straight out, which very few people in the world can do that, right? So you're getting a mortgage, you're paying a mortgage, you're locked in, interest rates can fluctuate. Usually in general, you're locked in into your mortgage anywhere between 15 to 30 years, right? Or not locked in, but you have a mortgage anywhere between, it's rare where you see 10 years, right? 15 to 30 year mortgages and usually you can um, with your banks you can or your lenders you can get into discussions and sign an agreement saying you're going to lock in your interest either anywhere between from a year to five years i don't think you can lock in a longer than five years some places might offer that right anywhere between a year to five years that way if interest rates are going up you're locked in a lower price but you have to be careful because if you lock in your price and interest rates start falling down then you're locked in at that higher price right so when you lock in your interest rates you usually get a better interest than if you're doing a floating interest rate right because if you're actually locking in you get a little bit higher maybe it varies right but if you're floating interest rate basically uh how much you pay per month is at the whim of the markets right if interest rates go through the roof uh, your mortgage is going to 
kick up huge, right? That's the general gist of things. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. I'm gonna catch a mirror. No, you pay your monthly mortgage and then utilities on top of that plus insurance. Oh yeah, insurance. Thanks, buddy man. Uh, you also pay insurance, and you need to get insurance for a house. Okay, Ding Bobber Chicho, I'm going to inherit my parents' house. There's a very good chance that the mortgage will be paid off by then. Okay, I want to keep living in it as it's a very nice house. The other option is to sell it and downsize far in the future, hopefully. Should I expect this property to appreciate or do the opposite? I am in southern Ontario in the suburbs. Uh, which part of Ontario? First of all, Ding Bobber, in Canada. Um, I think it's across Canada to tell you the truth I'm not 100% sure about that but in BC uh, when you're a senior citizen the government allows you I don't know if this is federal because I'm not a senior citizen I'm not doing this I know the elders in our family are doing it but because I'm not interested in owning anything and I'm not you know I don't get into people's finances I haven't asked them um, if it's just a BC thing or a federal thing, but in Canada or in British Columbia, look into your where you are in Ontario. Senior citizens can defer their yearly tax payments until they either pass or they sell the house, right? So when the elders die, right, and they're going to pass on property to the next generation, if they haven't been, if they've been deferring their yearly taxes government taxes they have to pay right every year for let's say 10 years 15 years senior citizen you know canada average life expectancy i believe is about as above 80 right so let's assume from 65 to 85 they haven't paid their taxes for the house right and the taxes depending on how much it's worth it accumulates right so if they haven't paid for 10 years let's say they're paying four thousand dollars in taxes per year that means when they die, you have to pay $40,000 in taxes, right? If your property is worth a lot more, you're paying a lot more in taxes, right? Um, $4,000 is dirt cheap, is on the low, 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 low end, right? So be careful with that because if your parents pass or when your parents pass, hopefully your parents pass before you pass, right? Because that's something no parent wants to deal with is uh, having a child pass before them right so if luck is with you your parents pass before you pass ask them hey have they been deferring the tax payments how much is accumulated how much are you on the hook for if you don't have that cash you have to go to the bank and get a mortgage on the house to be able to pay that off to the government right now if you don't have good credit the bank might say and if times are turmoil depending how much house is worth how much money they own the bank might decide not to give you a loan right if the bank doesn't give you a loan you have to go to a secondary lender secondary lender charges high interest rate right so it's not loan sharking loan sharking is credit cards credit card companies are loan sharks really in any other period through human history right these organizations that charge anywhere between 20 to 30 percent interest on any loans would be considered loan sharks in certain parts of the world they were they were illegal they would be arrested put in jail or executed right seriously throughout human history right now of hopefully you're not gonna rack up debts on credit right so if anybody has debt on credit you're paying interest to credit card companies you're dealing with loan sharks get out of debt right or there are different ways you can do it <laughs> we won't get into that right um but look into it there's a whole bunch of things at play uh, when you own a house also what's the maintenance on the house do you have to uh has the does the roof have to be uh changed right and the roof changing a roof in canada costs anywhere let's say average twenty five thousand dollars right is the electrical okay is the plumbing okay is there mold is there leaking what are the issues as far as if the house price is going to go up or down uh canadian dollar in the last uh two weeks has gone up around 10 percent relative to the u.s dollar right so all of a sudden house prices in canada because canada is a huge country a huge place in the world where foreign money has been laundering money 
right? So a lot of money has come into Canada, buying up a lot of property and just laundering money. Really, it's laundering money. You can't call it anything else, right? So Canadian dollar has gone up, let's say around 10%. It's gone from like, in the last month, let's say, gone from like 69 or 70 cents, 71 cents to 75 cents, 76 cents. Uh, not 10, but getting close up there, right? 8% or something like this. So that means house prices in Canada are 8% more expensive relative to US dollar, right? And I'm pretty sure it's also the case for a lot of other currencies as well right so if that's happening and money's being locked up a lot of places and the economy is going to take a turn you know tumble is canada going to remain a money laundering country right some of the provinces have passed laws where they're reducing the amount of or the ability of foreign money to launder money through canada we'll see how this plays out right there's taxes being introduced and whatnot so i don't know that's my general gist i don't know if house prices are going to go up or they're going to come down, which part of Ontario, lower Ontario, do you live? Are you in London? That's a university town. Are you Kitchener Waterloo? That's a university town. Are university numbers going to continue to remain high in Canada? Most likely, right? So if that's the case, then house prices might maintain their value, right? Because you can rent them out and whatnot. So there's a lot of things at play, right? I went off on that a little bit, but I just want to lay down the foundation for things, right? Bad question. Sorry, I should have phrased it differently. Ding Bobber, you phrased it well enough. Trolls are already Catholic traditionalists. Yeah, I know a Catholic traditionalist. Uh, they got nothing better to do, maybe, right? Part of our centralized education system, right? They're not very good trolls. You need some Montreal bagels. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Miro, okay, pa, pa, pa. okay, so I'm gonna scroll down because I went off on that a little bit and. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anything directed towards me. Hopefully, people are having a good conversation. Uh, you may like the Trissel's theory. If I can post link and this post the link in Discord, Bib, uh, uh, Bib, okay, Bibster, uh, for sure. Okay, glad I have a better understanding now, Miro. Okay, thanks for the input, Chicho and Spider Man. I was just curious, and I don't think they ever taught this in school, uh, Miro. Our education system, our indoctrination system, system in Canada, United States, they really te don't teach kids personal finance, investing. They, man, they barely teach kids how to read and write or do mathematics. They're not going to teach you how to become a free human being, right? The centralized system wants everybody graduating from high school to obey right to be indoctrinated in the current system and the best they do is try to do a little introduction of how people should file taxes but they're not telling you how you should really manage your taxes they're teaching you the bureaucracy of it not the business aspect of it right so don't for all of you guys if you have if you're still in school and if you're you recent graduate please appreciate this our centralized indoctrination system has dumbed you down to the level that they want to control you. You need to re-educate yourself. Put the time in. It's not easy. It might be painful. You might be amazed at some of the things you discover. Uh, it is enlightening, empowering, and it, it works towards getting your freedom. Okay ding bobber you're gonna go ask them good stuff seriously ask them about that because if they pass or when they pass right all of a sudden that tax burden gets passed on to whoever they left the the property to okay catholic tradition is heck there are loan sharks that charge lower rates than the credit card companies yeah catholic traditionalists agree i it it to me it's amazing that we as a collective as a society allow the two main credit card companies three there is whatever there is but mainly visa and mastercard to run a loan sharking scheme like this to enslave tens of millions of human beings right and by the way okay credit card debt is not like student loan debt in canada united states you can declare bankruptcy and clear it you could decide now i'm not recommending this take everything i say with a grain of salt this is not a recommendation as how you should behave because if you want to maintain your good credit you need to maintain your good credit right but with credit cards if you don't pay they'll 
whatever it is, right? The way it works with debt, they start if a company you owe money to a company, right? And they can't collect from you, they sell that debt at a certain amount on the dollar, right? So let's say you owe somebody a hundred thousand dollars, right? They can't collect from you, they can't garnish your wages, they can't find you where you are, and stuff like this. So after a while of trying to track you down, they sell your debt. Let's say they sell your debt at 50 cents on the dollar. So your debt that you owe right which is a hundred thousand dollars now they sold it for fifty thousand dollars right that's the first tier let's say right usually the first tier is less than fifty cents on a dollar right but let's say fifty cents on a dollar so now a company buys your hundred thousand dollar debt right for fifty thousand dollars and then they start chasing you right so if they're able to collect fifty thousand fifty one thousand dollars from you right sounds like a great deal to you you're only paying 51 percent of what you owed initially right if they can collect fifty one thousand dollars from you they made a thousand dollars profit right less all the bureaucracy and all that crap right now the people that bought your debt at fifty thousand dollars if they can't collect from you they'll chase you for a while they'll sell your debt let's say 10 cents on the dollar right so now it's a hundred thousand dollars of debt they paid fifty thousand dollars for it they're gonna write that off of the losses they're gonna sell it to another company for ten thousand dollars right so the second tier company that bought your debt is ten thousand dollars they're gonna start chasing you for a hundred thousand dollars right so if they're able to collect twenty thousand dollars from you that means they double their investment Ooh -hoo, rock and roll right now they'll chase you for a while and they can't find you that those people are gonna sell your debt for a penny on the dollar so someone's gonna buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt for a thousand dollars right and if they can collect ten thousand dollars from you whoo -hoo, rock and roll they made ten times your money right so after a while they start chasing you and in Canada seven years your debt disappears your own your whatever as long as you don't interact with them you acknowledge the debt or or whatever it is right there's a whole bunch of bureaucracy involved right this is a machine you're dealing with right if after a certain amount of time they can't find you your debt's gone into the wind Ooh, just like wall street right bankers oh well, that what we don't want no money give us the bailout right your credit you get bad credit on this right but you just went to the bank robbed the bank for hundred thousand dollars if you want to think about it that way again this is not a recommendation okay just understand how the system works who you're dealing with you could usually if you owe money you contact the people that you owe money to you say hey listen I got fired I, I got health issues I got the best I can do from a hundred thousand dollars I can pay you twenty thousand dollars they'll take it okay they will take it Maddie GG how you doing easiest way is to not use seat belts what <laughs> VC Chicho, what's your view on abolishing property? Uh, I don't agree with it, as it, as in people can't purchase, own, and amass land and property to oppress others. Seems like that's a huge part of oppression in human history. Here's the kicker, VC. Right? If you live in a country, right, and the country doesn't allow you to own property, who owns? Who controls that property? Who really owns that country? Uh, that property? It's a centralized government. So you're not really abolishing ownership of a land you're giving it to a centralized government right let's take one situation let's assume you had a benevolent centralized government for 50 years right that took care of everybody's land all all the repairs on the houses and everybody and everybody just paid a little bit of rent money to the centralized government right to live in their homes okay and when they wanted to move they looked around to see what was available who wanted to move where you could cut deals and do all this stuff right for 50 years 10 five decades everybody was living happy 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 right under centralized government and then you had a government like you pick which government do you want to come into power which is the opposite of what you were living under what's going to happen right let's assume it's a certain type of government right that gives out trillions of dollars to wall street right and i don't care which side of the bench you live in right uh democrat or republican they've both done the same right so for the last 50 years right all the governments that have administrations that have been power in the united states of america have given handouts to 
Wall Street, from the SLN scandal to what's going on right now. All of a sudden, these people come to power. Do you trust them, right, to make sure you will still be able to live in your home, right? No, I don't agree with giving all property control to a centralized institution. That's one way, one road to disaster, right? It's monopoly, which is what we live in right now anyway, right? I want to own a home in Minnesota someday. Any tips and suggestions for a 26 year old? Um, look into, and this is not just in Minnesota, for anyone that's looking into buying a house, right? House prices have gone up crazy in the last 10 years. Okay, insane, right? If you look at the averages, you got to look at the charts, right? Look at the charts of housing. See how housing has appreciated. If you plan on buying at a time where, you know, let's assume housing on average over the last 100 years has gone up, let's say 2% per year, it's matched inflation. Let's say it's matched plus 1%. Let's say inflation was supposed to be 2% and house prices have gone up 3% per year, right? Over the last, on average, over the last 100 years. If in the last 10 years, look in your region, if in the last 10 years, house prices have gone up on average 10, 15% per year, sometimes 20% per year for a 10 year period, do you think you're buying at a maximum price peak? Or do you think it's going to go higher? It's going to all of a sudden stabilize and follow the same curve and keep on increasing in value 3% per year? Or do you think it's going to come down? Right? Because if it comes down, it might come down a lot right so you have to look into the charts look into the data one of the things i can tell you about someone who has been involved in the housing industry or was involved in the housing industry for with family for a good part of three to four decades okay housing prices do not double in two three four five years which is the case that has happened in certain parts of the world okay in general okay the next thing during the time that I've been watching it from the late 1970s all the way to 10 years ago, even five years ago, right? When you wanted to buy a house, you would bring in inspectors, people that were going to inspect the house, right? And tell you what was wrong with the house, right? But because in Canada anyway, for the last 10 years, there's been tremendous amount of money laundering going on right so what you've been having is houses coming on the market and then outside foreign money places a bid usually above the asking price without even doing any inspection on the house right no inspection on the house they don't care they just buy the house they plop the money down why are they doing that because they really don't care about the house they care about moving the money right and they're going to rent out the house because their rents are really low right so you have to consider hey what's the international market going to do? what are money flow is going to do how's half half house price has gone up like this and when while this has been happening right a lot of the property that i've seen sell over the last 10 years not even 10 let's say eight years in british columbia specifically in vancouver in vancouver and victoria right the hot parts of the area right they have been selling without any inspection and they've been selling over value what the price what the house has been worth by ridiculous amounts okay what the house has been assessed for okay so people have been buying homes buying apartments buying property without even inspecting it which to me is insane okay so look into all these factors was was us if you're buying a house paying for uh, for a thorough inspection of all um, aspects, including fund one, is well worth it. As long as the inspection comes through, okay, right? Don't want to buy termites. Don't want to buy termites. Don't want to buy black mold. Don't want to buy electrical. Like one of the things you should do when you walk into a house, find out if the if the floors are even, right? Grab a ball bearing, put it on the ground. If it's hardwood, see if the ball bearings all go in one direction. The house is tilting, right? Go there with two people. If the house is two floors or three floors, go upstairs, flush all the toilets. One person stays on in the lower floor, 
or the second floor or whatever it is to hear the plumbing right plumbing is one of the most important things right turn on the taps and listen to the pipes there's been houses that have been built that I've seen built when the booming housing boom is happening and the best plumbers are not available and construction develop developers bring in whoever they could get a hold of right they set in plumbing where they put a 90 degree angles all over the place and the plumbing when you flush a toilet on the, on the third floor you hear just the whole house fills with water noise going down the pipe dun, 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 dun. The, the pipes haven't been sealed and stuff like this right in, incredibly important electrical incredibly important right electrical is a little bit harder to test but you need to bring an inspector electrician to figure things out right ding bobber chicho thing is my dad is uh, fixing up the house during his retirement so when all is said and done the house should be in good condition haha -ha, i'm in oshawa ah you're in oshawa nice i've been there man i did a lot of a lot of work there in oshawa as well uh fantastic if you're uh, if the property owners are doing work on the house by all means and by the way if you're gonna buy a house buy a property look in online for used whatever it is Craigslist used websites and stuff like this or go to garage sales in the summer in springtime when people are having a garage sale start buying some tools you're gonna need some tools if you're gonna own property you are gonna need to maintain that property okay I'm here I was running Dungeons and Dragons. Nice, Graham. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello, all. Mr. Hezekiah. By the way, welcome, everyone. Okay. The U.S. has had pro private property and people still sold themselves as slaves. And now people are, are weight slaves to massive companies and landlords that own lots of properties. VC, 100% agreed. But that's not because there's private property. Um, as an option right that's because the whole all of the united states administrations for the last whatever number of decades has been have been bought out by the banks and wall street right so it's not that the the basis of private property that's the problem right you gotta hit the root cause is money laundering it's it's monopolies it's bureaucracy right it's corruption you gotta weed out the corruption spider-man bitzer i'm thinking philosophy chicho what do you think i'm not sure what the question is uh spider-man okay gang i'm gonna scroll down to see if there's anything directed towards me uh okay elder god says this my father paid twenty five thousand pounds for the family house in 1987 worth two two hundred thousand k now all paid off awesome elder god okay so that is what is that return that's uh eight times your return right so eight times return twenty five thousand dollars eight times return and hopefully at that time the mortgage that they got was only like 10 years of maximum if they got a mortgage maybe they paid it off in one shot right now just imagine if they took twenty five thousand dollars and bought microsoft stock or certain other stocks right that were paying out dividends and stuff like this Microsoft stock at the time through all the splits and stuff like this were pro probably less than a dollar right right now it's sitting at a hundred and last time I check I forget what it was hundred and seventy dollars or something like this right the return there is a lot more insane than that but you also have to consider during that period that would have you would have to rent somewhere as well so there's investment opportunity lost but in general you need a stable place right you can't risk everything all your funds so if you're doing type of investment what you want to do is have high risk medium risk low risk investments in your portfolio okay catholic traditionalists personally the ownership of private property more specifically property that constitutes real wealth example farmland livestock tools etc has allowed me and my family to move towards what chicho might call an anti-fragile lifestyle awesome right and that's what it is right you want to become anti-fragile you don't want to be at the behest of the whims of the market and the centralized power and wall street and the money money lenders and the money launderers and international markets and turmoil like that right you have to look at where you are Ch -ch -ch. 
my aunt paid her uh, eleven thousand dollars Canadian in the sixties is worth three point five million. Yeah, ding bobber, right? Graham Chicho, my parents rent their house from people from overseas. They would like to purchase it from them, but the people won't sell it because they will always be able to get a better price from a foreign buyer who is going to resell it as is with no skin off their back and no work. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking, Graham. Right? This is like, for example, I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. During the 1990s, I went to Cuba five times, right? I was very interested in the revolution. I knew my political history and I was a cigar aficionado, right? I I had clients, I had a humidor, I had amazing cigars, and I had clients that would call me up and for a period in Vancouver, I was the only person that had a certain brand of cigars that was rated the number one Cuban cigar in the world, right? Hoyo de Monterey Double Coronas, right? I was able to get, go to Cuba, get my hands on a few boxes and brought them over to Vancouver. And I would have um, film studios. I had a couple of connections, right? Producers, directors, and stuff like this. They would call me up. They say, hey, we're doing a shoot right now. We have these clients and they love their cigars. Can you come and set up a display? So I would go to where they were shooting. It would either, it was a, what do you call it? A studio they were doing it or a hotel they were doing it or whatever they were doing it, right? I would set up a table with different types of cigars, right? And they would come over and I'd tell them how much each cigar were. They would buy cigars off me, right? So it was amazing. I loved it as a hobby as someone who loves something like this just like comic books i did the same thing with comic books right i went to comic conventions set up tables and sold and bought some comic books right incorporate what you love into your lifestyle and if you really want to spend time doing that hobby make sure you are able to generate money through it that way it feeds itself right you your hobby becomes either a, a revenue source or it pays for itself right so i did this for a while and i looked into cuba and i you know when i was going there i would ask people i go okay first time i went i thought about this i went okay how much is a property here right and i remember talking to people and they told me you could buy a house beachfront property for five thousand dollars us right in the 1990s and 1990s i was working as a geophysicist living with the folks i was early 20s right living with the folks trapped because one of the reasons i was traveling all over the place all over canada certain parts of the united states so i didn't really need a residence right or if i went to another city they would put me up at a hotel room and i would stay there for whatever travel around and whatnot right so i was making mint money i had a couple other revenue sources comic books cigars and they were just paying for themselves right so i went five thousand dollars where do i sign up i want to buy a property in cuba right i looked around if you're not a Cuban citizen, you cannot buy property in Cuba, right? Why was that the case? That was the case because at the time, the Cuban government knew that $5,000 for a Cuban was a lot of money. But $5,000 for people outside of Cuba, for certain parts of the world, that was chump change, right? And if they opened up the markets to money launderers, people who can throw away chump change at will, right? If they open up their markets to outside money buying property in Cuba, not being Cuban citizens, right? Then Cubans wouldn't have a place to live in. And all the Cubans would slowly become serfs, right? They would be paying rent to outside money, right? Cuban government, pretty damn smart. Well, guess what? At that time during the 1990s, me living in canada i was making flush money five thousand dollars was chump change right but i couldn't buy a house in cuba because the cuban government knew that well guess what economics happen globalization happens and slowly over time right places where i could have bought property for chump change well they started rising example china rising right all of a sudden the number of millionaires and billionaires in china went through the roof now me living in canada my wages really didn't go up that much over the last few decades compared to what i was making then i'm making less now my money has less buying power right because of inflation and and all that jazz and right now me as a canadian 
my situation, global ranking in terms of purchase, purchase ability, purchase price, right? What my money can buy has dropped tremendously, right? Tremendously. So right now, Canada for the last 10 years, 15 years has been in the same situation in terms of if you do a comparison as me and Cuba compared to Canada and China or Middle East or other parts of the world, right? Now, houses in Canada, 10 years ago, a house that we were involved in, right, that sold for $1.7 million, $1.5 million, right, a million dollars, right, $500,000 in Canada, some people from certain other parts of the world, that was chump change to them, right? So $500,000 house in Canada 10 years ago, 15 years ago, was chump change to certain people in other parts of the world. But Canada was not as smart or was way more corrupt than the Cuban government because the Cuban government was taking care of the Cubans, making sure Cubans had a place to live. The Canadian government gave a, didn't give a rat's ass about Canadians, right? They opened up the floodgates. 15, 20 years ago, if you wanted to move to Canada, Canada considered investing. You had to invest if you wanted to fast track your Canadian residency and slowly work your way towards becoming a Canadian citizen. You had to invest in Canada. Well, guess what? To them, investment was considered also buying a home. So foreign money started flooding into Canada as different parts of the world started rising, right? Their living standard going up with offshore and globalization and stuff like this. All of a sudden, foreign money started buying up property up the yin yang in Canada, right? Because it was chump change for them. For Canadians, it wasn't chump change, right? Canadians still have to get a mortgage, pay all this crap and 20 year mortgage and whatnot, right? So all of a sudden, a house 15 years ago that was worth $500,000 until two years ago, right? You could say that house went from $500,000 to $2 million, right? One and a half million dollars, right? Canadians couldn't afford that shit. So Canadians become sur serfs. Okay. Keep all this in mind. This is extremely important. George Chicho. Hey, Chicho. Hope you are having a wonderful day. I made it through my first day of my new job and I love it. Nice. By the way, it's major shake. Major shake. Sorry for all the confusion. Major shake major shake it is major shake it's not george george major shake if i forget remind me again brother i've been saying george for so long now and that's the way i see it major shake major shake awesome awesome vc says i don't agree with people buying property and living off it that's where i want to be in 10 years uh, oh, I don't disagree. Sorry, I read it wrong. So VC, I don't disagree with people buying property and living off it. That's where I want to be in 10 years. There's just a lot of property where people live, especially in cities owned and monopolized by slumlords and property management firms that work with the centralized government to extract all as much money as possible from tenants. 100% agree VC. And one of the places we saw this roll out was a 2008 financial scam that happened where the government gave a ton of money to Wall Street and Wall Street started creating organizations, REITs and stuff like this. And they took all that taxpayer money and bought homes that were being foreclosed on packaged all those up and kicked up the rent so kick people out of their homes that they were duped into buying and mortgage fluid it was just a scam right so both democrats and republicans have done this to the american people both liberals and conservatives conservatives more so than liberals in canada have done it to canadians right and in other parts of the western world your governments have done that to you as well lark how are you doing I'm going to scroll down to see if there's anything uh, directed towards me, man. I'm missing a certain amount of chat, I believe. Okay. Graham, I want to buy a cabin in the mountains and mountain it on my own. I don't want to play the game, but I don't see a way not to. Um, Graham, to a certain degree, we're in the system, right? So you can do it in the mountain, but then consider this. 
you're going to lose high speed internet you won't be able to stream you won't be able to um what do you call it be able to interact with the internet fully hopefully free for flow of information as much as you are right now or and if you are you're gonna to have to pay satellite fees which are extremely expensive right uh, and as you get older you probably want to have access to facilities that have health care that can provide health care for the elderly and stuff like this right so there's a lot at play spider-man i think we're going to have a house built in utah you get to pick the house and build certain way um, you want things spider-man um yeah inflation too as well uh spider-man building house is fantastic but know what you're getting into okay plumbers electricians ridiculously important the carpenters you get your base carpenter is very important if you're not keeping track of what's going on with the finances and stuff like this you're going to get hosed right make sure you get people that are going to do this and work people that are going to do this that have scruples they have morals right they have a good track record look into who they are okay i'm gonna scroll way down gang okay sweet i'm down at the bottom i didn't see any any anything pop out towards chicho so i'm gonna read the last couple of messages i tried my best best i tried my best two sides of the same coin uh -huh. australia just encouraged people to buy homes by offering fifty thousand uh, k deposit deposits out to first home buyers but you know uh, where they're all gonna end up at the beginning of the quarantine yeah. catholic traditionalists i know many people that own mountain properties in colorado i strongly considered buying property myself just note graham that there are real challenges with mountain properties i wish i had five dollars for everyone that bought a mountain cabin and then had to buy an expensive water storage system in order to have a water supply yeah there, and uh what do you call it uh sanitation system right like that's the whole thing there's a whole industry geared towards make making property that is off grid but it takes a lot and there's a lot of experimentation taking place right what's it called black water where your waste goes into a place and it gets filtered and it feeds your um, crops that you're growing it's a long process right anakin seven thousand but how would you even know if a stock is the next microsoft you wouldn't right you wouldn't and I, I by the way i don't recommend buying microsoft right microsoft is working to make sure that propriety software does not uh maintains dominance right they sabotage uh, companies they uh regu regulatory capture governments they uh they practice monopoly practices predatory practices microsoft is not a good company right if you have if you have bought into microsoft sure your stock has gone up you've gotten your dividends yay 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 right but over that period they've reduced the number of options you've had in your life right they've reduced the free flow of information right they've worked towards enslaving humanity is that worth it i don't know i don't know chicho to get his attention hey yeah is that the microsoft one thanks thanks was this uh, da, 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 da. okay great this conversation going on between me. i'm gonna have a little bit of cake gang or a little bit of lemon meringue pie we've had this before super delicious super delicious super good and it's very fluffy and disintegrates the meringue just disintegrates I bought this this morning. I've already had one piece today. <laughs> Check this out. Get this focus. Look at that goodness. Look at that goodness. Right? Fantastic. This is lemon meringue pie. It just disintegrates. And these guys here 
or marzipan. Take a look. This is marzipan. Look at this. This thing goes down like mad. Look at that. Whoop. Very good. Very good indeed. Very good indeed. <laughs> some more. <laughs> what? Okay, thanks very much for taking care of business, Graham. Um, the meringue is egg white that they beat, right? But it does have sugar for sure. Um, I don't know, Elder God. Elder God is asking, is there any milk in it? I don't know. I, I've never made lemon meringue pie. I don't think so, though, Elder God. It's very good, man. Carb galore, I guess. Graham, Catholic tradition is Chicho. I'm not saying I want to be my own, um, want to be my own uh, property, have my own property, but I want, would like a mountain escape for meditation and experimentation and gardening. Awesome. It's not a bad thing to want, Graham. Fantastic, right? The couple of things you could do, you could manage your life where six months out of a year, you live in the mountains, right? Hopefully not in the winter. Right, or if you love the winter, you live in the mountains in the winter, right? But you can manage your life where six months out of the year you live in the mountains, right? And six months out of the year you have a little apartment somewhere in the city where you do your city life, right? 100% doable. And tell you the truth, Graham, I personally wouldn't mind doing that either, right? <coughs> right yeah catholic traditions i'm with graham i'm with you as well i w that would be a good thing to have a mountain property right i'll have a horse or two right but if you have livestock and stuff you have to be there all year round or somebody has to be there all year round right graham yeah meringue is egg white with sugar beat with a beat into a foam yeah uh graham yeah that's what i would uh truly like yeah graham I think that's and that's something that's manageable to do right as long as we're able to uh, take uh, make sure that we change things around especially in the Western world where property is not considered to be something that you're flipping is considered to be a living space, right? Graham says, with my modest teacher salary, it doesn't really seem doable, but I want to, I want to be hopeful. Graham, I can honestly tell you this, and I've, we've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. If you're expecting in this current economic system to be able to upgrade your life based on your salary, and not, I'm not talking about people that are making $300,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $100,000 a year, I'm, I'm still talking to you, right? If you expect to be able to become financially independent, okay, over time, just based on your salary, you're dreaming in this current economic system. Okay, you need to take that money and you need to roll it out. You need to invest it. Okay, in our current economic system, you need to get money to beget money. Okay, which I don't personally agree with, but it is what it is, right? I wouldn't recommend just putting all your focus, all your life into that concept. Don't do that, right? You also need to live your life, but figure out what you want to, how you want to live where you want to be, what type of community you want to live in, right? What you see the future to be, right? And have a hopefully longer outlook, wider outlook than just your lifespan, right? Because as far as I'm concerned, we're here as stewards of this
planet right now right we shouldn't be so selfish that we want to consume as much as we can while we're here okay so you need to everybody if you're making salary and you're making anything let's say less than a hundred thousand dollars you need to start thinking about investing right what are you going to do with that money hopefully you're not going to put it in wall street only or or even wall street right anakin chicho personally i think the idea of buying a house as an investment is useless because you only profit when you sell it um not necessarily anakin because what you could do is buy a house as the house house value goes up start taking a mortgage on that property right if you find investment opportunities in places right and start rolling that money into places where you're going to make a higher interest than what you're going to be paying mortgage on right it's all a game right now keep in mind if you're doing this that takes a certain amount of energy that takes a certain amount of time right so you're not just getting the money to do that you're also investing your time your energy into that if that's what you want to do you know it's your deal okay but uh, it takes effort right keep this in mind as well right when you buy property you're locked in you're not as mobile right and you don't have investment opportunity open to you so all of a sudden if you see an amazing investment coming your way right and you need to you know amazing investment let's say there's twenty thousand dollars you can invest in that possible return would be astronomical right and you're already mortgaged out to the tilt right and you don't have any savings right and the bank won't lend you any more money because you don't have enough capital right inside your house then that investment opportunity of twenty thousand dollars is going to pass you right so you also have to consider that there's living expenses there's the, there's um, uh, maintenance of the house right and taxes and hygiene and all this jazz right scoops how are you doing good afternoon what are your feelings on the negative interest rate idea uh the fed has i fear for a fiat dollar failure uh we're in negative interest rates right now right inflation they say is only two percent two and a half percent but it's much higher than that we know that but inflation might be going in period of deflation possibly maybe higher inflation we don't know stagflation where are we at but by all intents and purposes we're already in a negative interest rate environment we have been so for a while now okay and is negative interest negative interest is going to have huge effects right and in in terms of social security rsp all these funds that are invested are, uh, that are based their investments on being able to give out um, dividends right they're supposed to have a certain yield and people have invested they're put their life savings into these bonds or these uh indexes or whatever it is or these stocks that are supposed to give them this much percent per per year that way they can live off that and all that jazz once we go into negative interest rates that that stuff is coming down right all of a sudden grandma that's sitting there that has or grandpa or whoever it is or family right father and father and mother siblings whoever they may be you know for 20 years they've worked they've put their money into the into the markets and they're expecting to get that paid this much dividends per year and their living living style has gone up to match that right so they got a lot of expenses going on right all of a sudden if that gets cut what happens to their living style right that's that's gonna make certain things come down graham chicho i'm working on it but you told me to focus on one uh, one other thing so i'm working on the stream as an avenue to produce products that we could sell awesome graham that is the investment you're working on right that's fantastic we are working on a board game and we have some other products on the dock that's what you uh taught us caught us working on earlier awesome graham that is a plan and a half graham yeah, and again take my enthusiasm of it with a grain of salt right really take my enthusiasm with a grain of salt but kudos to you man what you're doing right now is what i would recommend people to do right start thinking about 
how you can incorporate what you love to do into your lifestyle in a way that it can generate a certain amount of funds it could be a revenue stream coming in right worst case scenario it is entertainment for you that you're spending doing something you love what's wrong with that right what's wrong with that graham i'm glad to hear that man that makes me happy that makes me happy major shake major shake chicho do you think agriculture equipment would be something good to invest in uh, i live in oklahoma and the need for hay is usually cons uh, consistent year round i would have to put it put in the work myself with mowing the hay taking it then bailing it i would have the potential to put more money in my pocket from selling the hay in the winter but i'm afraid i would pour too much money into it with the cost of fuel and parts uh, when something breaks what are your thoughts i'm stuck on the fence uh, major shake I, here's a kicker first of all storage right okay do you have the place to store what it is that you're going to sell in the winter because you're going to take the hay down in the summer right as it's grown or fall right so you have to store it for how long six months storage as you sell the product right so there's storage fees and as you said there's um, equipment costs fuel costs and all this jazz but if it's your time your land you have the storage paid for and it's something you like doing you could give it a shot but don't put the farm you know don't don't go into debt because of this uh, i would say just try it out if you think it's viable right if you see your first year you at least break even and you love what you did kept you healthy you learned you grew assets you got more equipment you learned you you're able to optimize and you know next year you're going to reduce your expenses you're going to do it faster because you have experience then all of a sudden that's going to hopefully if all things stay the same that'll generate a little bit of revenue right next year see if you're happy with that revenue right were you being paid a dollar an hour to do something you don't like or were you making five dollars an hour doing something you do like doing right is that worth it to you it's very personal right but uh, i don't know the commodities agriculture stuff is a hard place to make money right Un unless you got monopoly powers given to you from the government right raking the hay not taking raking yeah Josie 52 I'm subdividing my property in the suburb at the moment for profit then we'll buy 10 15 acres to at least have wanted wanted to for years this coronavirus has inspired other people to do the same so the rural land has already started to go up in price yeah and regarding this Josie okay in January or December actually it was New Year's Eve okay 19 uh 2019 so new year's eve kicking into 2020 right january 1st i was at a party and we're all outside and living a 420 life and we're talking and stuff like this i had my vape going and whatnot i was talking with someone and this was in the suburbs this was outside the city we went overnight to spend the night there and stuff like this right and we're all talking and stuff like this and i mentioned that you know what i think city prices house prices property prices might start coming down because people are going to start wanting to go live in the farmlands and the suburbs not suburbs specifically but in the rural areas right now one one person i was talking to was a, it was a it was a friend of a friend that i hadn't met them before right and i mentioned to her that i think that's what might happen and she goes what how could that happen everyone's saying it's going to go the other direction right everyone's going into the cities like oh got a feeling that people are want to want to disconnect from this chaos right to grow food because health is very important and stuff like this so i think that is what we will be witnessing to a certain degree josie okay i think rural land farmland is gonna possibly kick up in price i don't take you know take it with a grain of salt and it depends where you live and whatnot right but a lot of people are sick and tired of this current economic system and that is an escape for them right it is freedom for them right scoops i am well good to hear good to hear 
Hoopbird, how you doing? Good evening, Chicho. I hope you are well. I am enjoying listening to discussion, this discussion and learning as well. Awesome. And people are sharing good information, which is fantastic. Scoops, you are touching on my points. When the unfunded uh, liberties are out of control, what do you believe the end game is? How does one short the dollar itself? I think we are near the collapse and want a strong hedge. Uh, scoops, I, I'm not on the opinion that the US dollar is going to collapse, right? Un unless, I mean, it's going crazy in the United States right now, right? Everybody knows this, right? And Wall Street, Hollywood, DC, the technocrats don't want to give up the ghost don't want to give up power that easily right they're getting on their knees dressing up as little clowns and getting on their knees and pretending that they give a rat's ass but they don't give a rat's ass right they are the enemy okay so if things are going to do a nice quiet rollout then the u.s dollar might get stronger right if the u.s continues to do scorched earth mentality where starts continues to destabilize different regions and people are money really because what you have to consider is this right now there's a lot of money that is invested in a lot of places seeking yield right they're seeking interest because they made promises that's their expenses if they need their investment to grow three percent per year for them to break even they're looking hopefully to get a little bit more than that right to break even and fight inflation get a little bit more than that so they can pay off their investors right right now what we're seeing is a lot of money chasing higher and higher yields right and they've invested in a lot of fragile countries regions corporations whatever you want to think about it everywhere right property everywhere right once and by the way i think this is the beginning stages of serious turmoil coming globally economically politically and whatnot right if a lot of places start going down where is that money going to go to which countries do you think present themselves as being some of the most stable right now the united states doesn't look too stable but but we'll see where it goes right canadian dollar is going up because seriously it's gone from 70 cents to 75 cents right it went from 69 the last couple of months to 75 76 so that's anywhere between four cents to seven cents increase in the last two months or so in the last month it's at least four cents right that's a lot that's a lot right for a currency to go up in price why is it doing that because people are putting their money into canada because they think it's stable right now meanwhile people don't consider that what is it 80 percent of the trade canada does is with the united states and the borders are closed right <laughs> and if the united states goes down we're we're gonna go down right so it's it's a lot it's a game it's a game it's interesting Anna, how are you doing thoughts on penny stocks i follow a reddit group and many of uh, them work nicely oh <laughs> i've heard that before Anna. penny stocks you're a trader right just trade in and out right you can make good money on them zubrowski chicho morals aside morals aside oh morals aside you can make mint money man long-term index fund investing s p 500 total market etc using a low commission self-directed account using tax-free accounts also etc is almost the most brain dead way to have a healthy retirement i'm retiring about 15 to 20 years early morals aside okay zubrowski here's the other kicker right if you look at the stock market look at the look at the stocks what has been going on the last little while in the last 50 years 60 years right stocks were like this for a long period from the 1930s 40s we did we looked at this by the way first look into our personal finance playlist gang we did a whole bunch of stuff we did a comparison between stocks and land and wages and cpi and uh, 
comic books and Bitcoin and funds and Wall Street and different things, right? Looked at the growth rate. But stocks have been doing, you know, were staying pretty stable, right? From the 1940s or whatever up to 1970s and stuff, 19, late 1970s, 1980s. And then 1980s, they went up a little bit. And then 1990s, boom, internet technology kicked into gear, right? And stocks went up and then there was a nice little crash and then went up again 2008 and then nice little crash and then went up again and then went up again crazy right so my question to everybody is they have been amazing an investment for the last 40 50 years is it going to continue your choice right morals aside now, if you're doing the S&P, and by the way, keep this in mind, look into our personal finance, look up something called differential accum accumulation. If you're playing that game with the S&P and stuff like this, you're looking at the averages, right? So if you're getting 5% per year return, which is fantastic, by the way, in this market right now, 5% return per year is fantastic, right? And the averages are 2%, you're making 3% mint above the averages you're doing them phenomenal right but if the averages are 10 percent and you're making five percent in the limit you lose right so there are different games at play morals aside put the morals in there man that's a different game okay i love board games smith me too graham cheers you too brother you too all the best graham by the way Da, da, da. sorry my phone crashed i'm back spider-man how you doing elder god makes sixty-five thousand pounds last year i was planning to travel this year but that's canceled now unless it's thailand in december nice sixty-five thousand pounds that's pretty good though elder god not bad yeah thailand nice in december i've never been i had a lot of friends that have gone there they love it i want to visit japan so badly spider-man says Ch -ch -ch. Okay, gang, I'm scrolling down. Uh, da, da, da. Chiha. John, 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 Ma Manuel, John, Juan Manuel Chiha. Uh, hey, what's up? I'm not active on Twitch. I just follow every streamer I watch. Your, uh, I watch you. You're welcome. Thanks for popping in. Catholic traditionalist chicho even if farmland does not appreciate in price you can make it into a performing asset you can build a house on it raise livestock on it grow crops on it etc etc i generally recommend if available land that is mix of pasture and timber so that you have still yet another asset the timber to make use of great recommendation that recommendation keep in mind gang right you can bring there's portable mills where if you buy land there's wood there and wood that you can harvest right you have the right to use that lumber right and most land you're allowed to cut certain amount of trees and use that lumber you can use that lumber to build your house okay if you have flat land you have grassland you can put up a little fence and throw sheep on there done deal right i know it's not as easy as that right I, I know that right but it's a learning experience you get your hands dirty you have a better connection with the land and a better appreciation for the land and if you can make it self-sustaining you can grow food right you have healthy food right that is going to keep you healthy and in the long run is going to reduce your medical expenses right so it's a long-term investment it is what Catholic traditionalists mentioned, making you anti-fragile. You're not at the whim of the markets, right? Tom, Tom Mayer, I want to follow you, but you lack so much, and you are the only one. Well, that's unfortunate. I hope it gets sorted out. Lord Cutley, how are you doing? I get like one hitch every couple of hours, maybe. Seems fine. Yeah 
scoops i am interested to hear that you are confident in the performance of the dollar at the point which the fed is issuing negative uh, rates on t bonds i cannot imagine any way they bail themselves out of the hole the others that here's the here's here's the thing scoops right the us is doing this right what's europe doing what's japan doing china russia russia is pretty stable man right which other currencies right now are on the same level of the US dollar, right? Euro is just garbage. Euro is useless, right? Euro is garbage, right? There, there's a word out there that they might convert everything to digital so they can control things, right? They roll over bonds and stuff like this. So it's not what's going on with the United States relative to historical measures it's going on what's going on with the united states relative to its peers right it's about differential accumulation the difference right it's all relativistic so you have to look at things globally and decide hey united states is looks ridiculously bad but the other places are burning down right that's one of the reason canadian dollar has gone up right Here's the thing in the 2008, I think 2008, I can't remember when this happened. Look at historically, the Swiss franc went up insane, right? Because people thought it was a safe place. And the Swiss franc had gone up so much, people were like, this is ridiculous. It was a bubble, right? And I'm pretty sure the Swiss franc, all of a sudden, the value of the Swiss franc collapsed over, not collapsed, but came down a lot relative to where it was because people realized. It was overinflated, right? So again, it's about money moving around. Where are they gonna park their money for how long they're gonna park their money? What what's the turmoil taking place? United States is in turmoil right now. We'll see how this plays out, right? We'll see how this plays out. Cheech, what's your opinion on capitalism? Is it the optimal system? No. <laughs> which capitalism which market which type of capitalism japanese capitalism chinese capitalism european capitalism russian capitalism uh, american capitalism uh, there is no like crony cat like it, we, people call it capitalism but it's that one umbrella doesn't fit everything right uh, is there a better system most definitely there's so many amazing type of systems we can roll out a lot of them have been written in science fiction books and stuff like this right a lot of them are communal based right this is definitely not the most optimum system we can live under this is the people that say this is the most optimum system that we can live under have zero imagination right zero imagination of what life humanity could be like right they need to take a little break and turn the boob tube off and stop reading um all the economic papers and stuff like this and start just letting their mind flow freely right start reading some non-economics uh, academic books or academic news or propaganda and start reading certain people philosophers that have an idea that have a proposal as to how we could live in a better system there are definitely way better systems around or could be around right thanks chicho my pleasure uh, zbrowski okay gang i want to scroll down to see if there's anything towards me catholic tradition of chicho good point on using the timber to build your own house this is exactly what my youngest brother is doing he he bought a mill and is building a house with the timber on his property of course he also has a convenient living la uh, labor force with all his children nice <laughs> awesome yeah fantastic right and by the way when once you go into a rural area more rural area the regulation the limitations of what you could do with your property go away right there's a lot of bureaucracy and paperwork and and expenses related to building homes in more densely populated areas if you go more in the rural areas then you don't have the regulators coming in and saying we need to inspect this this has to be this this has to be this there's 
places in British Columbia right now, and I'm pretty sure all over the world, where there is no building code. You could go out there and you have an ima imagination, right? There is a home you've always wanted to build. Maybe that home you always wanted to live in, you thought about it when you were in grade eight and that or eight years old or 10 years old or 13 15 20 30 years old where you always dreamed of living in this type of house and there's no way you could build that house with the money that you have in a city because the just the regulation the cost the bureaucracy of doing that will make that house you know cost you two million dollars or a million dollars to build guess what right go to a rural setting i, I don't recommend this by this <laughs> But go to a rural setting and do a little cost assessment, right? You'll find out that a house that will cost you a million dollars to build in the suburbs or in the city might only cost you five hundred thousand dollars to build in a more rural area, right? As long as you can get the timber and everything there, it might take you longer. You might have to put the work in, right? Some places will cost a lot more. You have to bring the lumber in. You have to bring the workforce in. You have to bring the cement trunks in. You have to bring all that jazz in, right? So it really depends where you live. It really depends where you live. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. Chicho. No, oh, that's not bad. Catholic tradition. Exactly right. Uh, so Catholic tradition is exactly right. There are very few zoning and building codes where most of my uh, kin lives. I would not be surprised if my youngest brother has a uh, still set up on the back 40 has has, has a still set up on the back 40 nice Catholic tradition of Chicho I should be careful I might give the impression the Ozarks folks are more like those in that TV show that Urchin let on <laughs> which wouldn't be a bad thing man life life there without the money launderers seemed like a pretty good place aside from the opium production right but hey and prohibition right twitching jason how are you doing evening gang hope everyone's doing awesome we're doing fantastic having a great discussion by the way this is a fantastic uh, personal finance investment uh, discussion we're having i like it how old am i <laughs> according to the mayan long count calendar I am an elder. Lemon meringue pie. Lemon meringue pie. Look at that goodness. Look at that goodness. <laughs> Very delicious. It is fantastic. Oh, Elder God. Zabrowski just watched Bloodshot. Oh, Bloodsport. I was there during the filming of it. Uh, catches the vibe. Well, Goldilocks. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Listen to your elders that have large goatees, right? Twitching Jason, I'm going to have to watch the replay. I've been really curious about your take on investing in real estate for for a while now. Yeah, and real estate is a funny thing, man. I've seen people, I've seen people, developers, man. They go, oh, prices are go too high. I need to pull out, and they pull out, and the market continues to rise up right and it's just like any other type of investment right you pull out the market continues to rise up and then you have to get back in the game and you're getting back in the game at a higher price right that's one of the reasons that's one of the reasons by the way a lot of people are afraid to step out of the market because they, th they think the market is going to leave them behind right so and that that includes investing in stocks and real estate and comic books and records in uh, collectibles and gold and silver in whatever you want right so 
my advice is always this if you want to stay in a certain market right if you're afraid that the market is going to get away from you and you don't want to completely pull out just downsize take a little money off the table right downsize a little right and let's say housing market goes off through the yin yang right your properties your property is not worth a million dollars you think it's overvalued 20 percent right then sell your prop if you're if you're in the game for investment this is not your living i personally when i buy a property it's not going to be for investment it's going to be for long-term stay right um i'm i'm done our family was in it flipping houses it's too much man right like our family in vancouver over the last three decades built 75 plus large scale homes and some other stuff and whatnot like i've seen things come up and go and move duh, 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 right it it's it's taxing right it, it and i've seen people in that game family friends and all this jazz right but i lost my train of thought but if you want to buy into the same market let's say your house is worth a million dollars and you think it's 20 percent overvalued right and you're willing to move right so you decide to sell that house but you need to live somewhere you decide to downsize you go live in a house you go buy property that's five hundred thousand dollars right you're moving expenses let's say are ten thousand dollars right so you sold a house that was a million dollars that was 20 percent 20 percent overvalued that's two hundred thousand dollars overvalued cost you ten thousand dollars right to do a move to a house that's five hundred thousand dollars now if that house five hundred thousand dollars is also twenty percent overvalued then that's a hundred thousand dollars overvalued so you sold something that was two hundred thousand overvalued spent ten thousand dollars to move went into a house that is only a hundred thousand dollars overvalued and uh you pay that extra fee that means you've pocketed ninety thousand dollars right let's say the market does a correction and house prices come down right your million dollar house is now worth eight hundred thousand dollars the or the one that you sold the five hundred thousand dollar house is now worth four hundred thousand dollars but here's the kicker property that is worth higher when the market crashes it drops more than the property essential properties right then what you can do is say okay you know what i had ninety thousand dollars in the bank i put it somewhere else that's giving some kind of yield i didn't lose that that's capital what you can do is buy back into the higher end right never be afraid to take money off the table scoops in your prof in your profession in the field of economics no my profession is not the field of economics i have a great interest in the field but see no way to make a career beside teach or be evil <laughs> no not necessarily you don't have to be evil but i personally wouldn't get into the field of economics right for me economics the through university is more about indoctrination right you can learn how the economic system works right now in our current societies wherever you live by reading books by playing in the markets right whatever market you want it to be in right you can learn about all that jazz on your own now the question is there is information there that you can use you know figure out what return on our assets are and inflation and all this jazz right that stuff is legit no matter what market you're in okay but uh, getting a degree in that why not go get a degree in something where you can use your economics to advance yourself in that field right you have the most soothing voice gangsta liam the gangster thank you very much i'm calming a gangster that's a good thing that's a good thing <laughs> i gotta do that <laughs> hey it's a more catholic tradition so you should hear his hey, ASMR rendition of system of downs prison song i gotta do i gotta do uh ASMR version of uh system of down song at least one and I, if, if i do that i'm gonna do one for, uh, nina simone one as well by the way and when i do that i should say when i do that because i will do that i'm scrolling down man i have no idea what he's on about but i'm loving it awesome 
Liam the gangster, welcome to our live stream, brother. Or sister, of course. Liam, nah, Liam is a brother, right? Twitch and Jason, have we talked about uh, about uh, have we talked at all about the role of debt in real estate investment? I'm personally totally against taking out debt for any sort of investment, though I know the term leverage is thrown around like crazy among real estate investors twitching jason here's the kicker right our current economic system functions on debt right it functions on enslavement and who do people owe the money to well the money lenders and who are the money lenders well the people who have co-opt the government right to give them convince the government and the population that it's okay for them to get interest-free loans so they can charge you interest to get your loan all right twitching jason our current economic system is built on debt. i agree with you back in the olden days people would never go into debt the way they are right now right they knew better all right the way they are right now to buy a house they would just save 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 until they had the money to buy something right this insanity was unheard of decades ago okay but because our current economic system is not there to empower the citizens of a nation it's there to make sure money flows upward to those who rule over us right uh, that is a system that is has been created right now how we're going to change it right we can decide not to participate in it which is not a bad idea right uh, we could also decide to build communities that collectively you can resist the pressure from the globalists and the wall street bankers and the money lenders and the centralized state right it takes time it takes effort it took decades to come here it's going to take decades to get out possibly unless we have major events happening right since the discussion is intended to be about housing what is your opinion on the condo market Oof. Where, where scoops that's the kicker right where like people were loving condos they were going off in price for a while right rj push play chicho i found you through asmr so that makes me curious do you watch asmr videos do you have any favorite artists right now i haven't been watching asmr videos i do uh i do watch rafi taffy every now and then okay uh i like him i've talked to him before uh three three years ago or so we we're almost going to collaborate together on a video and it just didn't work out we both got busy and stuff like that so i like rafi taffy uh, i like his demeanor he's a nice guy man i talk with him he's legit okay um there is uh asmr oh man what's his name uh, i haven't gone to his channel for a while so uh okay hold on let me find because oh can i find it can i find it oh man it's gonna be so hard uh hold on hold on hold on oh it's on my other computer oh hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. oh wait 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 do i have it oh yeah uh check this out uh terrar the uh, can't you see the kicker is i can't pronounce his name he's very good i'm gonna give you guys the link okay uh terrar uh the gulio terrar uh the gulio dr andrew uh michaels is terrar the gulio okay so uh him i watch and he's an amazing person as well right uh it, fantastic asm artist fantastic asm artist okay there's another person uh 
Man, do I have it? Do I have it? Do I have it? This isn't it. He does a lot of educational ASMR and he's fantastic. And he actually put out a video a while ago as uh, 10 of his favorite ASMR artists and he mentioned me as one of them. And that was a huge, huge, uh, uh, huge surprise. Oh man, I can't believe I forgot his name. I just haven't checked him out for a long time, right? Uh, da, 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 da. He's not going to be here. He's not going to be here. He's not going to be here. Oh, I won't be able to find it, man. I'm sorry. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Yeah, that is what it is. Sorry. Uh, but if you remind me, I will link it up in our Discord page. Okay. Hannah, today I'm uh, going to light up some herbs and my girlfriend yells out in the middle of us making dinner. I want to smoke weed, Chicho. My mouth dropped. Then I said, I love you. Ah, nice. That was a good love. I know who you were talking about. RJ Plush Play. Nice. Good, 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 good. I feel like if you like uh, Tarar uh, Lango, I probably like yeah. You, uh, Ifram uh, Rift, uh, if if Ramal uh, Rift, I looked at a long time ago, and I like his work as well. I just don't actively uh, watch his stuff. I'm not really huge into role play stuff, uh, so but his work as well is uh, is good. Lord Cudley for sure. There's some amazing ASMR artists out there, and there's a the community is phenomenal, man. Community is phenomenal. The mic sounds amazing tonight. Nice, might be the herbs, brother. <laughs> For educational, let's find out ASMR. Uh, ASMR, I believe so. Let me check this out. I believe so. I believe so. I believe so. He's a he's a blonde haired guy. Yes, that is him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is exactly who it is. And the other ASMR artist, and he's a, he's a fantastic guy, by the way. He's phenomenal. Let's find out ASMR, okay? And here's his YouTube channel. Let's find out ASMR. Fantastic ASMR artist. Uh, fantastic, uh, very good, very nice person, man, right? For me, I'm attracted to good people, right? I, I want, I want there to be. Uh, there's got to be heart in it, right? And that's exactly it. The French whisper, I don't know. And yourself, uh, for educational, let's find out ASMR. The French whisper, I don't know. And yourself, thank you very much for the love, uh, RJ. Uh, push play, uh, appreciate it very much. And thank you for uh, telling me what the name was. I'm so bad at names, man. Unbelievable. Uh, Vertra. Chicho. One ASMR person I love is Decaf Math ASMR. That's right. And I did Decaf Math uh, ASMR. I've talked with her before. We communicated a little bit. Just texting when she first came on. And she she really loved my math stuff. And she's fantastic. Very, very kind-hearted person. And a very good person as well. Okay. And she does fantastic work. And her, her mathematics is legit. She's there to help people learn math. And she's she's very good. Very good. Every single one of her videos is a math lesson. She's a really good math teacher. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Decaf Math ASMR. She popped on our live streams, by the way, uh, a while ago when she was, we were live streaming like a year and a half ago, when she was just getting into the ASMR stuff. <laughs> And I pronounced her name totally incorrectly. And she was just laughing. She was just saying that Chicho was pronouncing my name totally incorrectly. And she was just laughing her ass off, right? Uh, so decaf math ASMR, I highly recommend as well. Okay. Tarish, tarir, tar, tarar's stuff uh, got a little too experimental uh, for me. 
Yeah, I'm not into the role play. That's the kicker. I like him because of who he is, how he presents himself, and he's 100% sincere about the stuff he does, right? Um, I follow his Twitter feed, right? And uh, let's find out ASMR. I also uh, follow his Twitter feed as well, but he's not, he doesn't pop up on my feed too often. Uh, some somewhat right yeah let's find out asmr highly recommend uh, if you like educational asmr fantastic really same with uh, uh decaf math asmr if you're focused on the mathematics okay yeah his planet and space videos were really good nice french whisper is amazing long videos of all sorts of history uh definitely a recommendation okay awesome if you guys can we got an asmr folder in our discord page give you recommendations man right give you recommendations it'd be amazing i drifted away from the super inter uh, intentional style of asmr like role plays and stuff and started preferring more chill and meaningful content like yours yeah thanks switching jason and that's what i've really been into from the get-go right I like information. I like education. I only, Graham says, I only listen to unintentional these days or super aggressive Indian massage these days. <laughs> nice to hair massages and stuff. I've watched a little bit of that before too. Oh, wow. Cool that you guys know each other. Fun. Oh, we've touched base. I'm not too embedded within the ASMR community. I just do my thing, right? Uh, I just do my thing. And there's certain people that... Have, they've either reached out to me or i commented and we get to talking and stuff like this uh, for me i'm sort of a solo gorilla style operator right uh, th i think that comes from my uh, desire need need uh, to live as a free human being and have and my selfish nature of not wanting to take on responsibilities right spider-man says i met uh your 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 feral riff back in to uh, 2012 when he had a small channel spoke uh spoken to him many times nice nice he seems like a very nice guy too the spider-man he seems legit bonnie bonnie henry is asmr gold i don't know bonnie henry i don't know bonnie henry fun we're almost into two hours gang we had great uh, discussion about investing in housing and stuff i hope uh more 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 lemon meringue pie more lemon meringue pie look at that goodness look at that thing oh <laughs> nice nice i love that oh my meringue is falling off my meringue is falling off Look at this thing. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Bonnie Henry, the BC Health Authority person. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> thanks smith i've listened to her on uh, on the radio when i've been driving and yes i never connected bonnie henry is asmr gold <laughs> bonnie henry is our a provincial bc health officer yeah that's too funny smith that is too funny super funny and by the way we got two people from here from bc hey gang how you doing fun yeah yeah i've actually because i don't watch tv I, and i haven't seeked her out online i've only heard her voice i've never i don't know what she looks like i've just heard her voice right when she's been on the game right she stayed on top of things extremely well like really huge respect to her huge respect to her right and it says that buy looks amazing and if i was a high it would even uh, even more amazing 
elder god things open up next week the mask menace comes yeah Ma mass menace come yeah it's good We're, we'll see what happens in on in uh, new brunswick i believe or nova scotia they flatten the curve and then things are kicking up again a little bit so she's the only lady in my life covid updater <laughs> there can be only one there can be only one fun fun gang fun stuff man I, I gotta finish the meringue pie i'm gonna have a sip of tea and finish the meringue pie yeah, some more gold eh by the way i'm watching uh transylvania the animation is pretty good thank you for the recommendation people recommended that so I started watching it that is great super fun Catholic tradition as Chicho I'm having a bit of a snack and be sitting here with celery and hummus celery and hummus is pretty good I wish I had a piece of my mom's butterscotch cream pie. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, Castlevania. Not Transylvania. Thanks, Graham. I'm watching Castlevania right now. The Netflix series. I like the Pirate Bay. Wow. Fantastic. What are you guys snacking on, by the way? Catholic traditionalists is eating celery and hummus. Any thoughts about Canada adding incels, male virgins to terrorists? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think they've done that. Is it serious? Hilarious. I don't think that's happening though. What's my favorite movie genre? So Riley Chan, for real, asked me, what's my favorite movie genre? Science fiction. I love science fiction. The problem is, difficult to make very good science fiction movies. Smith Nando's. Oh, you're eating Nando's. Mm. Well, mm, not because it's Nando's. Nando's is... I would, I would like to have a Nando's that's organic chicken with the sauces all being organic and stuff. Club sandwich. Ooh, I love club sandwiches. Club sandwich, so delicious. Smith, Shisho, they uh, they did do that. What did they do? What did I say? I forget. <laughs> Elder God, Chicho, I'm on Babylon, Babylon, uh, Babylon Five, season three. Now you're on season three. For me because i'm watching it with my partner i can only watch babylon 5 with my partner when she's not working and stuff like this she has doesn't have other things to do so we're on episode number six of season one we watched the first movie and we're on episode six of season one and gang if you like science fiction watch babylon 5 okay fantastic series i'll give you a little uh little thing that on the last episode that happened it was beautiful beautiful right they live on live on live on this space station right and every episode it's like a star trek thing it's like star trek basically right so every episode there's certain things that happen and there's a huge philosophical aspect to the to the episodes to the discussion right so in this episode it was about it was uh, is all the, these different races are living on this space station and it's sort of the only place where all these races are really interacting on that level and this they decide to have a day or a week of celebration of different traditions and stuff and religions and whatnot right philosophies so all these different religions these different not religions these different aliens start doing their traditional this you know this is the ritual 
religious ritual this is this this is this this is this right and the earth people that are running this space station uh, they're supposed to do theirs right and the captain that's needs to plan this thing out he's he hasn't figured out what to do yet at the end of this episode they have the major representatives of the five major or four major races that are on that station right waiting for the captain to come to show them what he's prepared for them right because he's having a hard time trying to represent the human race as the major ceremonial uh spiritual representation of what the human race is right and then he goes oh okay i'm here and then all those ra all those people follow him and he goes into this room and says okay here's the major ceremonial religion or spiritual beliefs of this of earth and he goes to the first person and says okay this is an atheist this is uh you know they shake their hand this is this is a christian this is a muslim this is jewish this is hindu this is um, buddhist this is this this is this, this and the camera right as they're shaking hands right moving along and he keeps on saying all these different belief systems and the camera just keeps on rolling by and there's dozens of people lined up representing the human race as being the philosophical representation of what we're all about right beautiful beautiful right and this came out when 1993 right when was it written probably 1980s elder god knows this right and by the way elder god has a discord page okay on babylon 5 and he's sharing a lot of emotes and stuff like this so i recommend if you like science fiction um if you want to know about babylon 5 elder god has a discord page on uh, babylon 5 and i recommend watching it okay hannah what i don't get is COVID is so serious why do governments allow all these protesters to go out and in infect everyone hannah here's a kicker right a lot of the pictures that i've seen videos i've seen protesters people are wearing masks right not a bad idea they're wearing masks that's okay and why should the government be allowed to let people go out like i don't i don't agree with lockdowns either mandatory lockdowns right that gives too much power to centralized states i think people should be educated enough to know that there's something going around and maybe it's not a good idea to interact with people right unfortunately an indoctrination centers haven't educated people to a level where people are making wise decisions right but so be it maybe well we we'll, won't we'll go down that road right i did agree with recommendation that things should shut down okay i don't believe that centralized states has should have the right to force people to uh not go out right using violence they can violate social distancing with thousands and risk the health of the entire population but i can't have a baseball practice with my baseball team it's absolutely insane to a certain degree yeah i agree with you hannah it is absolutely insane but when you guys were playing baseball were you guys going to wear masks right i i don't have an answer for you hannah i can honestly tell you that for me as far as i'm concerned the physical distancing is a good thing uh businesses that decided to close on their own and there were some that said you know what this is getting a little out of hand we're going to close to keep our employees and our customers safe right i agree with that personally but i don't believe the centralized state should be allowed to use force to enforce that those laws on people because we know what centralized states do right uh rj push play they are protesting despite of COVID. they are putting themselves at risk for something necessary for change unfortunately unfortunately all right i have more toilet paper hello welcome to stream afternoon chicho after watching chernobyl last night i found myself transporting uh radioactive material listening to you educate us as is uh, educate us all is keeping my anxiety down uh, what a what a series by the way what a series by the way i think i think you're, oh the chernobyl yeah i watched the first episode and then i watched half of the second it was just too dark for me i stopped watching it and there was a there was some propaganda in there by the way keep that in mind
Okay, Catholic tradition says I'm still working to find time to enjoy some of those anime recommendations you all graciously provided some weeks ago. Hope to find that time soon. I hope you enjoy Star Wars or Star Trek. Star Trek, without a doubt. Riley Chan, Star Wars, the animation that the Samurai Jack Grouski or something made with Star Wars is good, and the original Star Wars movies are good. Uh, Return of the Jedi, Star Wars. Um, what do you call it? Uh, not the Return of the Jedi. First Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi was great until the Ewoks came in. It was still fantastic, by the way. Don't get me wrong. Um, but Star Trek, without a doubt. Star Trek, without a doubt. In, in response to the Catholic traditions, in response to the morals aside issue, my grandfather, a man with little formal education but tremendous wisdom, once told me that there are few things easier than for a dishonest man to make money. He left, he left it to me to realize that the cost of money made this way was way too high. 100% agree, right? You put your morals aside, you can make money. You can make mint money, right? But you lose something you lose your humanity and once you lose your humanity man very difficult to get it back and that is the biggest loss you could ever 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 encounter right catholic tradition of chicho good point on using the timber to oh did i get kicked oh i got totally kicked up whoop something happened oh yeah because we ended up having trolls Graham had to take care of business okay gang we're into two hours should we call the stream let's call the stream gang thank you for being here by the way fantastic conversations um a fantastic discussion great recommendations uh, okay thank you moz for taking care of business uh aside from that gang I am on Patreon. If you want to follow this work and support this work, Patreon, uh, you can subscribe to, you can follow. Uh, if you do have the means, supporting this work through Patreon is fantastic. I don't put anything behind paywalls. Everything is Creative Commons. So you can just follow the work and take a look at what we're sharing, uh, what type of information, uh, content we're providing. And in the in the future if you decide uh, you do have the means and you do have the funds you want to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to do so we are live streaming this on twitch twitch.tv backslash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e okay uh you can follow uh subscribe it's also a fantastic way to support this work if you want to participate in the chat live twitch is where you want to be at okay I do announce these live streams on Twitter, Gabs, Minds, VK, and Elo, and share additional information so you can follow the work there uh, if you want to know what I'm up to. Okay. I will be uploading these discussions to SoundCloud in audio format as podcasts, basically, and that's soundcloud.com backslash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. Okay. And they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform. If it's not, let me know. I'll see what I can do about it. Okay. As for the video, we will be uploading this to YouTube and BitChute. Everything goes to BitChute, so if you want to follow all our work, you want to subscribe to BitChute, turn on the notifications, okay? Almost everything will go on YouTube as long as the sensors will not deplatform us, and they are tightening their grip further and further, so there might be certain content that we will not be loading on YouTube for much more, much longer but if you are on youtube we got approved for youtube membership and joining through youtube membership is also a fantastic way to support this work okay aside from that gang i hope you guys have a fantastic tuesday evening okay have a great rest of your evening morning be blessed pax vabes come uh catholic tradition says peace everyone I hope you have a peaceful day, peaceful evening, peaceful morning. And if you can make it on Thursday, two days from now, we're going to do a math live stream, drop in math tutoring session on Thursday, I believe at 2, 2 30 p.m. Okay. The odds are that might be our last math stream live drop in live session 
for this school year okay we'll see what happens because a lot of uh schools in my area are closing at the end of this week okay or next week maybe okay so math stream on thursday at 2 30 p.m aside from that bye everyone i hope you have a fantastic fantastic next couple of days